Hey, how's it going? This is Rick Burnett from Erogenous Tones, and today I wanted to do a quick video on two of the bigger changes to version 3.4 of the firmware. If you notice up in the top right here, there's this new pixel. That's it. That's our update. No, I'm only kidding. So um, the first thing I want to look at is let's switch over to the parameters page. And here you're going to notice um, these new symbols in the front here. And what those symbols are is the mapping of the values that are coming from the modulator and then going to, in this case, a fragment shader. So let's just go into mod source and we have this thing called val map. And so one to one is means that if you have zero coming in, zero comes out. You have one coming in, one coming in, one comes out. So if you look over here, I have a ramp that is coming into CV1 and you can see it goes up and then resets. So if we go into the mod source and change that to invert val, now you can see it's inverted and the line is going down. So if we go back in there, oops, wrong one, um, and go to the next one, we have up down. And what that means is if the value is zero, it comes out zero. If the value goes up to 0.5, it, it um, scales up to one, and then as you go from 0.5 to one, it comes back down to zero. And this just allows you to do some interesting things with different waveforms coming in and modifying them into other waveforms. So these settings will be saved as you save your preset and recalled. So the big thing that we added in this firmware, hit the mod viewer button down here, and that's gonna bring up the new mod view menu. Now, what you'll see down here on the left, you'll see L, E, and M. This stands for LFO, Envelope, and Math. And we have eight LFOs, four envelopes, and four math slots that you can do things with. Now, if you look up here at the top, you're gonna see these little lines shooting up and down. These are a quick view so you can see what they're doing. So right here, the first eight are LFOs that are doing the LFO thing, and the next four are envelopes that aren't doing anything. But if I trigger, an envelope, you'll see one shoot up and down, and then the last four are math. So this is just a quick spot that you can go and look at to see that things are happening. Now, before we get into the function of, of each of these, with these LEM buttons here over on the left, these are for quick navigation to get to the different ones that we have. So if I hold L down, we can select any of the eight LFOs, and it will jump immediate there. If I tap L, it's just gonna to go to the first one. Same thing with E, same thing with M. This is a quick way to move around. So let's go through each of these LFOs. Now, all of these envelope, sorry, all of these um, modulator sources can be assigned in your parameters just like any other modulator that we have. So the system is very universal that way. So here we have a sign. And we'll just step through these and talk about what the parameters are that are different in each one as we go through them. So here we have relative frequency. So if I put quick change on this, and you can hold the button next to it if you want find values, this allows you to move the relative frequency. Now, the reason we say relative frequency is because these values are actually generated relative to the frame rate that you have going on. So since frame rate is not consistent in structure, it's based on how complex of programs that you have running, this changes. And the reason that we did it this way is if we had a separate process generating these values, if they're not synced with the frame rate, they're not smooth when you see animations based off of them. Because in time, they're both operating at different times and different latencies between them, and it just doesn't look that smooth. So we decided to go with relative. Now, we also have a phase offset, so if we hold quick change in there, you can see we can change what the relative phase is between different LFOs. And this allows things to not be synchronized in the same way. So, you know, just gives you more freedom. Now, free run means that if you change presets, do you want this LFO to reset as you move into it from a different LFO setting? Because you, when you save a preset, these all go in there. So if this is set to, to on, then it won't reset wherever the accumulator is at that point. So it just puts for more variation as you're switching between presets. But if it's turned set to off, you always start from the same point when you load a preset. 
So let's go up here and we'll go to the next, which is ramp. And its other feature is direction. So we can have it a ramp going up or a ramp going down. And then next here is triangle wave. And this one doesn't have any other settings. One thing I want to say about the relative frequency here um, that I didn't mention before is you'll notice that there's a lot more slow values as you go across. And then it ramps up at the very end. This is because fast LFOs don't really look that great in video work where you're changing things on the screen too quickly. Now, there are things that you might want to use that for, for effect, but we found that a lot of times you want to just have nice slow ones that allow you to create moving, you know, patterns and stuff across the screen. All right, so the next LFO is square, and this one has a duty cycle setting, so we can change this and change the duty cycle either direction, so you can set how long and how off, uh, how on and how off it is. And then after that is random. Now random, let's move it up a little farther, has this other parameter called smoothing. So let's shut it off. So with smoothing off, you see that it instantly jumps between values. As we turn it up, it works like a low pass filter. And you can see it smooths out how fast the values change. Now, because of this, if you have a really high smoothing, you'll need to turn down your relative frequency if you want random to have a chance to move between really far values. But this is really nice for just, you know, interjecting some really smooth, random things going on. And one thing to note, you know, these values that come out of the LFOs, the envelope and math are all zero to one. So if I uh, switch back over to um, parameters real quick, if you don't want it always to go up to the top value, well, then that's how you set your value range. So you come over and you hit the min max and you bring that down. And then if so, if you only want it to go from zero to 2.5, now that's the whole range that you're going to get that modulation going in. So this allows you to really fine tune if you want things coming from whatever sources, how big they are. If you don't want to adjust them here because they're using it multiple locations, you can adjust them there. And that's always been there. All right, so let's exit back out and go back in here. And then there's a none if you're not using it, but we usually leave them on. So let's go to envelope. So envelope has uh, a few settings. First is the rise time. So you can select how long rise is gonna be. And same thing with fall. And then shape allows you to go from, you know, exponential to linear to logarithmic. And then at the bottom over here, we have symmetry. So if you want that symmetry to be on or off, it just indicates how the fall works relative to the rise. So in this case, they're symmetric. And then type indicates how it's going to work on a gate signal. So AD means the attack comes when you hit the um, gate to turn it on, it will rise to the attack value and then fall. It's not going to wait for the gate to be deasserted. So if I hit right there, I'm holding it in, but it goes all the way up and all the way down. So if we change that, so let's change that to AR, which is attack release. Now when I hold it in, it'll stop at the high value and then fall down once I let go. And these are really nice if you're like tapping along, you know, with a MIDI keyboard or one of the gates here to like maybe some percussion going on or something like that. You can get a nice envelope working relative to what you see. All right, and then let's move on to the last one, which is math. So math is designed to add or, you know, or actually I'm saying add, but bring two signals together using different math operators to generate a more complex one. So you have two inputs to each of these. You have a multiplier that multiplies by the input. This is so if you've got things that are, you know, going swinging full range from zero to one, you might want to bring them down so that you're not just maxing out at zero to one after the math operation. Here, there, it also has value mapping. So if I wanted to change, you know, invert or up, down, or up, down, or down, up, I can do that. And then, you know, right here it's showing LFO1 and LFO2, but you could bring in any of the CVs or any, any of the other sources that you have. They're all able to be used here. Now, offset allows you to 
offset this whole waveform up or down. So think of it just like this one over here. You're just adding to it. This way you can position it where you want. And then slew works exactly the same as the slew with random. So if you want to smooth things out, you can um, use that so that they're not changing so uh, abruptly. Now for operators, we have add, subtract, multiply, divide, modulus, max, so max of two values, min of two values, average of both values, and back to add. And like we said, there's four of these that you can play around with. You can also, in case you were curious, you could feed uh, one math into the next math because, you know, math one is now a modulator if you want to get even more complex things going on. So the last thing we wanted to mention in this section was the random button. So when you hit random, you bring up this random control on the soft keys. So if you're over one of the particular modulators, the first selection is randomizing just that one. So in this case, that would be randomizing just the first LFO. The second button will be in, this, in the whole section that you're in. So we're in all the LFOs. So if I hit this, it's gonna randomize all the LFOs. Or if I'm in envelopes, it's gonna randomize all the envelopes. And then random all just randomizes everything. And you can move with this and, and you know, so that you can play around and quickly navigate to what you wanna play with and it will update accordingly. And then you can just close um, that and then exit to get out of there. So the last thing we wanna talk about is how these get stored um, in terms of usability. So just like the modulator sets, you know, every node set, as we go through these, like there's a node set for gen, there's a node set for gen and effects one, each of those have their own saved set of modulations. So if you've ever noticed, every time you switch these, you get whatever one is saved as the, that was the default uh, modulation set for that. Well, with the uh, LEM modulators, they have one set and that set is saved over here with save lem set. So if you hit save lem set, whatever all the LFOs, envelopes, and maths are currently set to, that will be the default. So when you save a preset, whatever the settings are, they'll get saved with that preset. And when you load that preset, that's what gets loaded into the current settings. So just like with the modulators, wanted to talk about how we end up using these. So if I'm getting ready to create some presets, what I want to do is have the system ignore anything that's saved in any of the presets. And if I change no sets, I don't want it to touch any of the LFO settings. So I go into LEM override and I toggle them all on. So in this state, all of the modulators will not change if I save or load presets from the preset system. So now I'll go through, create all my presets that I want, save them. And now that I want them to recall, then I'm gonna go into LEM overrides and toggle all those back off. And that's the same thing I do with the node overrides as well. It just makes it really quick to be able to have everything a fixed way if I'm, if I'm using particular modulators that I always wanna to go to the same node sets and, and I'm setting something up like that. But that is it. So if you guys have any questions, hit us up and uh, hope you enjoy these new additions to structure.